Hi, I'm Austin Watterson. I work for Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and I work for the number 115 Max Bolin. So starting at the front of the bike, Max runs the Renthal Fab Bar, the 821 bend. It's a pretty neutral setup, I would say. Some tracks, for example, when we went to Southwick, he rolled them back a little bit just because he stands so much that he wanted to uh, just roll them back. But then after that race, we pretty much just roll them back to neutral for the most part. It's a solid bar mount that we make in house. I would say it's also pretty pretty neutral like for his height. He's a lengthier kid but they're nothing too wild like not too low bar mounts are actually a pretty neutral setup I would say. Brake and clutch is pretty standard setup. Maybe a little bit on the lower end but not too bad. He runs his throttle pretty tight but not he has a little play in his throttle but nothing crazy. Over on the clutch side we run Brembo front brake and clutch. We run little carbon fiber pieces over the master cylinders just in case rocks hit them. I've known teams in the past have had problems with rocks hitting them and like the plunger will stick. Our levers are billet levers. On the throttle side, we run a, an aluminum tube. Max runs the Renthal grips also, just the normal Renthal grip that they come from. We'll run the grip donuts too. And also here on our throttle piece, on the inside of the throttle, we have a little metal tab that we just put in there and glue on, just so when the rider, obviously when they're on the track, if they push with their thumb, it's kind of actually as a little stop, so the grip doesn't overextend too much into the throttle housing or anything. Going down, we run the WP forks, the 52s, and we run the K KTM power part clamps, Max runs a 24 offset. We run DID Dirt Star wheels, STX, uh, laced in with kite hubs. They're not oversized or anything, they're just normal spokes. So yeah, on the front, on the bottom, we have oversized lugs. We run a titanium front axle. We run Motomaster rotors, and on the front we have an Aturbis carbon fiber guard. And then on the caliper, we have an oversized piston in our calipers. And then the brake hanger is a billet. On the whole shot device, we run more, I would say, on the, like the shallow to mid side. We don't go too deep with the 250. We don't want the front end so far down that when you come out of the gate, there's really no power going to the rear. Like we want to keep it pretty neutral. So then coming out of the gate, the bike's not so like, stink bug, you could say. This is our GPS. It's pretty much just when we plug into our logger, it's pretty much our GPS around the whole track. They can see where he's shifting. Pretty much just for us, it's like for the shifting. And it's just like we can talk about on the track where he was when something happened, just if he had like a certain issue or like anything, pretty much that just tells us where on the track he was at. Yeah, on the radiators, we do run an oversized one and obviously just for more coolant, the bike stays a little cooler that way. We run a 2.0 cap, just for a little bit higher pressure. And we run an oversized louver, obviously, to fit the uh, radiator. And then we use these little twin air screens that just helps with debris and dirt. They actually work really well. We didn't run them at all. I don't think we ran them at the first two rounds and then we just started running them, I wanna say, around high point. And they work really well with debris. And honestly, they're, they're usually only like a one-time use. They start cutting up pretty quickly. Twin air is great to us, so every round we can just put new ones on. And then on the back of the radiator, we have a fan. Ran from a LiPo battery. We just gotta have both of our batteries plugged in. Yeah, that's what it runs off of is a LiPo battery. It's pretty cool. Carlos makes them in-house and does it all on his own. And then the, with the radiators being oversized, there is a little bit different routing with the hoses. It's not like what a stock routing would be, but it's just three hoses. It's nothing too crazy. It just our main hose goes underneath the header onto the right side primary cover. And then we just have a small hose coming up into the right side radiator. So it's nothing too crazy, honestly. It's just small little hoses changing. So honestly, I've only been working with Max for only three months now. I started at Lakewood. But just working with Max and kind of knowing him, he just, on the 250, I know he just loves power. So pretty much I believe whatever they can offer him, he'll take. And our bike does pretty well, honestly, out of the box. So it's not too hard for KTM to get more power. And our guys down there at Layton and Kelly, they do a really great job with the motor development and all that and Ian. So everyone involved has a lot of work put into it. They do a great job. So yeah, pretty much it's just inventory like Leighton and Kelly when they have these motors apart they just kind of pair like a certain head with a certain bottom end so they try to keep motors all the same and similar and pretty much yeah for inventory we run the Euro gas cap just a little bit smaller of a gas cap nothing too wild and then we run an ETS fuel we run a Henson clutch setup with Max it's a pretty standard setup it's just Henson it's not a crazy pull like obviously from stock it's a little stiffer pretty easy pull still and the hydraulic clutch helps a lot with that like it's a good feel on the pull you know on the 250 more or less like the our exhaust is all pretty much the same we don't run anything different like we don't have any different header designs any muffler designs we pretty much just run the same always and Acropovic is an amazing system this is the first time i've ever worked with them the fitment's always super perfect they're really quiet exhausts 
And exhaust for me, for some reason, packing. A lot of packing seems to blow out quick. And for us, we'll weigh our mufflers and that's how we determine if they're bad or not. And Max is honestly pretty easy on the bike. He doesn't rev it out super bad. So we can get away with running a muffler for a decent amount of rounds just because of how well the Acropovic is put together. We run an Acropovic skid plate. Again, super well, good fitment. It protects the motor, protects the water pump really well, protects the stator. And then we just run our overflow coolant line out of it. On the rear brake pedal, it's just a stock tip. We haven't had any issues with those ever. And we run a little brake snake off of it to the frame. And then the rear brake pedal spring, there's nothing different about it. It's just a black coating. There's nothing fancy with it or anything. It's just black. We run an Nahilo high foot peg. And the foot peg pin is works. It's a solid piece in here on the head. There's no hole in it. It's just a solid piece all the way through. And it's a tie foot peg pin also. I think a couple of years ago, from what I understand, is they didn't run the frame guards from Maturbis. They were just running the frame tape. Well, I think Cooper ran at one race at a Supercross on a mutter, and he actually really liked the feeling of it. And I think they just started messing with it more and more. And I think when that other frame guard got wet, maybe not as great of grip or feel. So they started shaving them down and yeah, they just started shaving them down. It's a stock frame guard. It's just, we just shave them down just for a better feel. And they're actually really good protection on the frame. They help save our frames quite a bit. And sometimes we'll even run grip tape underneath the frame guard just for even added protection. And then the thing with Max is um, he grips, he's a taller, lengthier rider and he grips really tough on the bike. And we had this back piece by the right number plate, it would rip out a lot. So we actually just started making a little tiny aluminum piece, drilling it on the right number plate and just putting rivets in. So now it's held intact by a little aluminum piece and so now it doesn't pop out on us. So on the rear, like we run the WP Exact Pro kit shock and our linkage is all stock. So also the another good thing about the frame guard is it actually covers the outside of our rear master cylinder pretty well. And yes, the rear master cylinder doesn't have the sight glass in it just for added protection against rocks and all that. Our rear caliper, we have an oversized piston as well. And our brake hangers also billet on the back. And then also we run a custom pieces made in house from Raj on the space or on the wheel spacers. And then we have an aluminum nut on the rear that's actually stock, but we just put a cap on it just to help with dirt and all that kind of stuff. We probably run the scoop, I would say more than anyone in the 250 class. Max is pretty gifted with throttle control, so he can get away with it a lot of rounds. Honestly, the last couple rounds we've been going back to the you could say like the 33 rear but the spec version the 783 but this weekend just because that's how they started at Paula one is we're gonna run the dunlop scoop tire it's pretty much the mx12 but just spec it's a 110 he really likes it it's really beneficial on the starts and the deep loamy stuff helps him track really well so on the seat we run the salad de Val seat covers max honestly likes more of a softer seat cover so if my seat cover stays pretty clean not too bad we'll run it like two or three races almost but if not that will actually take a lot of seats from Marvin after a race weekend because Marvin runs the same setup. Frankie will just give me his seats and we'll run those. I'll just clean them up a little bit and we'll run them because Max likes a softer seat. He's, he's not really picky about much. He just wants a soft seat and he likes a really touchy front brake. That's about it. So on the rear, again, we run Renthal sprockets and we run DID chains. On, uh, on this chain for racing, we run a rivet link. It's just for pretty much just better durability. And on the clips also, like sometimes clips can break off. So it's just an added safety measure. We run a little plastic piece in the side of our axle just to also help with debris and dirt. Just keep it clean as much as we can. And then we run an Acropovic chain guide on the bottom too that Roger helped design and make in-house. It's a stock rubber chain guide, but the, the chain outer chain cover itself, the Acropovic piece is helped design by Roger and it just helps with the adjustability of the chain. So we run tie bolts on the rear sprocket and the Fuji nuts, they're stock, they're just a stock steel Fuji nut. But we just, uh, every time we change a sprocket, we'll just change those because we'll red Loctite our sprocket bolts do. That's just something that you don't want coming loose and that, it's a fast moving part. So you just want stuff to stay tight. For the motor, we have our covers anodized just for added durability and we have a works kite slave cylinder for the clutch and also we have a little carbon fiber piece that runs up from the stator it's just a little carbon fiber piece to help with the cables it just helps guide and added protection too so it's not exposed or anything our head stays they're all stock just stock from the factory and we just run we have tie bolts for them same with our motor mounts the bolts are tie we'll rerun a tie swing arm pivot and also the same with the rear axle it's tie so twin air does our filters for outdoors we just we run the same filter all the time it's just for outdoors the 
filter is a little more thick. It's just obviously for added durability, not trying to suck dirt or anything. And we run the power flow kit. Just the cage is all cut out just for lighter weight and it's just less material. And then also some of the sandy rounds, we'll use a little twin air cover to put over the filter to catch more of the extra sand. But honestly, we haven't ran it much this year. And also all of our filters are one-time use. Like we can try to squeak through a couple practices. Frankie gives me a hard time, says I go through them a lot. But for me, it's just, if, if I see a little bit of tiny dirt, it's like, why risk it? Where Frankie would, he just goes for it. But Frankie's awesome. <laughs> Runs a little bit of a, on the looser side of steering that I was, ever used to. He just likes it for comfort, like late in the motos too, like late in the motos if he's a little bit tired, it helps him with just having more control over the bike. And it's just his preference. He likes it more on the loose side. He's not a big, if it gets a little bit tight, that's the only thing. He's kind of picky about that too. Like he just wants it to be on the looser side, but so you just gotta do what the rider wants. So that more or less, that's just in our ECU. Ian uh, works with a lot of that stuff. Pretty much when, if Max asks about something, Ian goes in and puts the mapping himself into our ECU. Up front, all we have is our kill switch and our start. We don't have any like mapping options or anything like that. So that it's just, and it's just to simplify, just cleaner look, less cables up front, just a lot of that. We have decal works doing our graphics. They do an amazing job. It's